Hi, I'm Nick and this is the TBT channel and this is part three, the third and final part of our HW35 stripped down tune, relube and rebuild videos. In this one, I'm going to show you how to relube it and rebuild it. Okay, this won't take long. We're nearly done. So we have so far taken it apart. We've degreased everything. We've polished up the piston. We've checked our TBT kit to make sure that it is the correct length for our piston. And we have followed the HW record unit, uh, trigger unit video on how to adjust our trigger unit. I'm just gonna check something here, sorry. You can talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, I have already done this trigger. Just checking, just checking that I had followed my own advice and done that trigger already. I have, so that's good. Must mean that I'm telling myself the truth. So where shall we start with the piston? Now, this needs lubricating lightly, but correctly. I mustn't wave things about. Somebody said I wave things about too much. I watched Magnus Pike a lot as a kid. I'm guessing it was that I'm sorry I'm doing it. I, I It's not a conscious thing. I'll try and keep my hands still. So what we're going to use is a molybdenum paste. The one we make and the one we sell is called Bum Slide. There are others available. Use whichever one you like, that's fine. Just make sure it's a molybdenum based grease. Okay, so we just need a small amount of this because it is very, very high content of molybdenum. And we're just gonna work this in. Now you're gonna have to bear with me because this is a customer gun. So it is being done properly so it can go to the customer in working condition. So this one's actually gonna be in real time as it leaves me. Now, and to work that all the way in and all the way around, what we want to do is pay particular attention to the skirt of the piston because it is slightly flared. So that is where most contact is going to happen. Now the contact only really happens during the cocking stroke. When it's flying forwards, it barely touches anything. Not enough to do any harm. So it's the cocking stroke we're trying to protect it from. And now we need to lubricate the piston seal. Our finger is already black. So we're just going to rub downwards like that all the way around. So we just put in bum slide on the lip of the seal but not on the face of the seal. Okay, so there we go. We don't put any lubrication inside the compression tube, just onto the piston. Now, another thing which I'm gonna mention, should have mentioned it in number two, just check the inside of these cocking slots to make sure there are no sharp burrs and use a small needle file if necessary to remove them. Forgot to mention that in two, mentioning it now. And that goes in. Good. Next, contrary to all the other brake barrels, we're going to put the spring in before we put the barrel on. That is because the barrel on this one has uh, a locking latch, not a spring loaded detent. So I think I'm right in saying we can do everything else before we put the barrel on, which if you need to use a spring compressor, is a lot easier without the barrel on it because it's a shorter unit, so a lot easier to keep under control. Now, I will say, in the previous one, we measured it, it's capable of holding 25 coils. I've taken a coil off simply because I don't like running anything at full. You know, it's it's gonna, it's gonna be more comfortable to shoot with a coil off of it. It's gonna be easier to cock with a coil off of it. It's gonna be easier to rebuild with a coil off of it. And it's probably gonna give identical power. So this is a sub 12 gun. It will still be sub 12 with that coil off. It may be over 12 with the coil still on there. So I'm, I'm making the gun run in its happy place rather than absolute full chat where it might not be happy. So we need to take the guides out of our spring, as I mentioned before, clockwise twist and pull. Now, if you really can't get a grip or say you've pushed it right down inside so you can't get hold of that bit there, take a screwdriver, lay it across the spring, underneath where the guides are, hold it like that, and then just turn it 
and you'll see that the spring acts like a corkscrew and pushes the guide out of the spring. A little top tip there. Because when you've got greasy fingers, it can be difficult to get a purchase, especially on a top hat. So again, just that there. Now people say, well surely if the guides are tight, that's gonna rob the power. It doesn't. Springs actually expand outwards when they compress. As they compress down, they unwind and they expand outwards. In compression, this is 0.4 of a millimeter wider on its internal diameter than it is out of the gun. So 0.4 of a millimeter. If that was loose now, it would be baggy when it's in a gun, which is why baggy guides make guns twang. Okay. We're going to get, get our top hat and our bum slide. We're going to push a little bit of bum slide inside the bore of the top hat to lubricate the latch rod. And then we're going to put some bum slide on the shaft of the top hat to lubricate inside of the spring. Pop him there. And then we are going to get our rear guide and we are going to get our flange. And we poke our rear guide through the flange like that. And next, we take a small amount of bum slide, and we push some down the bore of the guide to lubricate the latch rod. And then we put the rest onto the shaft of the rear guide and we pop him into there. Right, good. Next we need to lubricate the, I'm waving things around again, sorry. Next we need to lubricate the spring. moment lubricate our spring so we take our sachet of grease that's in the tbt kit cut a small corner off and then squeeze a small amount of it into the palm of one hand then we take our spring put it in the palm of that hand and pull it through and then just work that amount of grease onto the spring and that is sufficient okay get some on the end of the top hat that's enough to stick the slip washer onto there, push him up inside of the gun and into place. Okay, I'm now just going to wash my hands and I shall be back. Close enough for jazz. So, next we need our trigger block, just a small amount of bum slide onto the facer there to allow the flange to spin around. Bum, bum, bum. And then we're going to push the trigger block onto here and turn. Now, one of the reasons that I have removed the coil was to make it easier to rebuild as well as making it shoot more pleasantly. Now, we've got a few mil of preload there, and we've also got that much preload inside of the gun. So that means how much total preload have we got here? 12 mil there, 12 mil and 18 mil there. So we have exactly 30 millimeters of preload. I will put in the comments how much power this produces. This is a 177. I will put in the comments how much power I'm getting from this particular gun with 30 millimeters of preload. That will then give you an idea of whether you want to take a coil off your spring, whether you want to run it full chat, that kind of thing. Um, normally I would aim for a 177, about 10 and a half foot pounds is where I like them to be. And um, just as a matter of interest, if you have a 177 air rifle, it running at 10 and a half foot pounds, and you zero at 35 yards, wave my hands again, you zero at 35 yards, the zero difference at 50 yards is less than quarter of an inch. Okay, just, just so you know, difference between 10 and a half and 11 and a half at 50 yards is nothing. So that onto there, push and oop, find the right point. Push and turn until it grabs like that good good the piston isn't turning make sure the piston doesn't piston doesn't turn in there because that will make the next part very tricky if you can't get your cocking shoe in now 
When we've done that up, you will see it isn't perfectly aligned. The dovetails and the trigger part there aren't perfectly aligned. So we get, our, again, from the beginning, what we use to undo it, a bar of something of softer material than the surrounding steel that fits nicely into there. And then we tap it back into position until until you can't feel with your fingernail any joint on the dovetails or on the trigger housing. That is now in the correct place. And I am also going to put the trigger unit back in now. I'm doing it a different way. I'm, I'm riffing here, I'm freestyling. This is, this is freedom. This is what it's all about. Actually, real freedom while rebuilding an HW35. Maybe I do like the HW35R, no, right. First thing we want to do is cock the trigger, okay? Then we're not fighting the spring for the tops here. The trigger you have gone, obviously. I, I, I'm, I'm like your mum. You have gone and watched the video about adjusting that trigger because that really, that makes so much difference, it's silly. You're not fighting the tops here then. Pop that into position. We also need our safety catch with its little spring in place. Now, if you lose this spring, I get a couple of calls a week of people have lost this spring. You can make yourself one from springs from uh, cheap disposable retractable biros. Just a top tip there. So put our spring into place, he's moving freely there. And we can line up these holes. Now, I like to have something light underneath it so that I can line the holes up better. We get our two pins. Our front pin is the longest pin. So line him up first. Are you lined up for your little? You're not lined up. It looks lined, but it is not. There we go. That's in now. So the front one is in allowing the trigger unit to hinge. So what we want to do is hold the safety catch in place and you can feel when it's in the right place because it will allow the trigger unit to seat and then it will hold itself in place. It won't come popping out. Then we line up that hole, pop him into place, pop him into place. like that. Now I'm using a brass hammer. Okay. The reason I use a brass, ha stop waving. The reason I use a brass hammer is it's softer than the steel. So I can actually knock pins in without risk of marring the bluing or the steel around it. Now fire off the trigger and it's ready to be set. Check that our piston is in the correct place for it to accept the cocking shoe. And now we will put the barrel into place. What we want to do here is lubricate this face where it's going to rub onto the underside of the gun because the, the, the jointed arm design, it will rub. So I'm just putting some, make sure that moves freely as well. Okay, same as with the HW50, make sure it moves freely. And then a little bit on the ears of that cocking shoe. It's not really a cocking shoe, it's just a bit that goes into the piston. A little bit of bum slide on there. And what I've got left on my finger, I'm just gonna rub onto the sides there, around the breech hole. And that runs through its tunnel and then drops down into that keyway and back. So he's locked into place there. I was right, it is going to be doable with the gun there, with, with, with the uh, spring in position. That's good. So next we are going to get the locking lever, lever, it's a lever, and the little spring. Move those so we can see into the area. Just a small amount of your bum slide onto the spring 
just it just keeps everything nicely lubricated and then on your lever here just a, a little bit around the nubbin some on the back and some on the sides just everywhere metal touches metal if you use a good molybdenum grease it will work wonders now quite often i sit here trying to puzzle how that bit's going to sit inside of the spring before i realize it actually goes that way around with the curly tail towards the front of the gum so that goes onto its spring drops into there and that's it that is in position so i'm going to give it another little rub of bum slide there and now we are going to mount the barrel in there from the top we need our shims and we need our big biro pen lid so we've got i've got bum side on my fingers so i'm just using what's on there it's only small amounts this needs pop that onto there and get it in to line up the hole here get it in to line up the hole I'll tell you what we don't put the shim in yet we line up the hole first do you ever get the feeling you've done something the wrong way around there we go so pulling that lever means you're not fighting the tension which means you can get it perfectly lined up take one shim onto this side push him into position using your big biro pen lid and then center him like that take your bolt with one locking washer and push him in this side before flipping it over and then inserting the shim onto the other side and then centering it like that and that pushes up there funky then we get our screwdriver there we go we just want to nip him up until we get resistance in there that's locking wherever i stop it turn it over lock nut on the other side with the locking washer underneath it and we do that up now all that remains is to put the stock back onto it which i shall do off camera so i don't scare any small children i will put in comments what power it is doing with the spring shortened to what I've put in here. And that is it, that is in real time, how long it takes to take apart, tune and put together your HW35. Please like, subscribe, hit notifications so you see the other videos as they come out. Thank you again very much for watching. I will see you all again soon, goodbye.